Okay, uh, my name is Rigor Ramirez. Uh, today, uh, I'm an instructor here at the Weaver Basin at Job Corps Center in Ogden, Utah. My lesson today, uh, course title, will be Tool Safety. In, in the lesson uh, title, it's a metal chop saw uh, inspection and operation. Uh, my lesson objective is after the le this lesson, the students will be able to inspect, identify defects on, metal stud, on a metal stud chop saw, like the one we have here, and be able to cut metal studs in a productive manner with 100% safety. Okay? The time, it should be right, roughly around 10 minutes or so. Uh, equipment that we need for uh, this lesson, uh, we need the, obviously the metal chop saw, which, which we have here. Uh, safety glasses, very important. Okay, the face shield. This is our face shield in here. Uh, we also need the earplugs. We need to have the earplugs. And then gloves, very important. All this is part of the PPE uh, that we need to have. A hard hat, like we all have you know, right now. Our hard hat needs to be on. Uh, measuring tape, some of the tools that I'm going to be using for cutting the metal studs, like the measuring tape. Uh, we have also a fine point marker. That's, that's the, some of the tools I'm going to be using to uh, uh, cut metal walnut, but do the markings on the metal studs. And a, a framing hatchet. This is the, the framing hatchet that we use for when we're running a, a metal stud, you know, chop saw. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do today, very first part of what I'm going to be teaching you uh, as students here, I'm going to show you how to inspect the, the chop saw, okay? That way in the future when you guys uh, run a chop saw, you guys will be able to identify the parts on our chop saw and find defects in case it means somebody else was using it and um, somebody else left it, you know, without the proper uh, use, you know, they damage a part, then you guys will be able to identify uh, uh, the parts on a, if they've been damaged or, or something, you know, happened on the chop saw. Okay, so um, the, we're going to be inspecting, that's our very first part. Then once we go through the inspection process and we're in the PPE, uh, the next part that I'm going to be doing is demonstrating how to cut the metal studs. We have metal studs here, uh, we have track. But the very first thing that we're going to do is inspecting our chop saw, okay? Uh, before we can do any of the cutting or we get into uh, even plugging the, the chop saw, very important, when we do our inspection, it needs to be unplugged, okay? So never inspect it while you have the chop saw plugged in. It needs to be unplugged at all times, okay? Uh, parts on the, on the chop saw, we have the guard. This is our guard, it should move freely, okay, you should be able to move it up and down, and uh, as, as you, when you cut it, this is what protects the sparks from, from coming at you while, when you're running the chop saw, okay. The spring of the chop saw, it's on this side, and it should be able to also move freely without pushing it too hard. This needs to be, uh, you know, very, very easily movement, okay. Another part of the chop saw that we have in here, very important, this is our vise. What this does is secure the metal studs in place. Once we get into the cutting process, you probably you will be able to identify uh, the parts in the, in the chop saw. Uh, the trigger in it needs to see the sound in here. Can you guys hear it? Okay, this uh, trigger is called constant pressure trigger. Um, it's, it's part of the, you know, the, the parts in the, in the chop saw. Basically, it's, it's the same as in a skill saw, the kind of saw you guys use for cutting wood. The only thing that we're doing here is cutting metal rather than wood. That's the only difference. Blade's a little different, and I'm going to go into detail of, you know, what it needs to be, what kind of blade we use, and why it's important to have the, the proper uh, uh, blade uh, here. Okay? Now... Um, inspecting the chop saw, visual inspection. Okay, we want to make sure, like I said, it has a part, and I can see that it's in good shape. I mean, nothing's missing, all our parts are here. Um, very important to do this. Can you step back a little bit? Okay, good. Um, cord. Okay, visual inspection. 
We want to make sure just, you know, visually inspecting the core, make sure it's everything's in shape. Uh, it, it's the average length of a regular chop saw. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you, very important. A lot of the times when, you, when we do a visual inspection, we can't see damage. Now, but now, if we run our hand right on the core, I can feel right away, you know, there's been a little bit of a, like rub or, you know, some kind of damage. I don't see any damage going through. Nothing has been, you know, tampered inside on the cables. And I keep on going. So you go up with, you know, I can feel another uh, damage here, but it's not, it's good. Uh, rubber hasn't been broken in. And all the way along until you get to the end. Um, right on the end, this needs to be, uh, um, it, it needs to be double insulated. It's part of the double insulation that needs to be with the, uh, with the chop saw. Now, in this case, the chop saw is double insulated. That's why we don't need a ground. But now, there are some uh, chop saws, you know, different brands, uh, that have a, that require to have a ground. This particular one, um, it's double insulated, and you can identify it here on the label. It has a D inside the square. That means it's double insulated, so we really don't need to have a ground. Uh, cord is good, and the uh, visual inspection is good as well. Okay, trigger, like I said before, constant pressure trigger. Okay, another a spring, good. Guard, it's good. And then ground, we already talked about the ground. We're not mid, and the, in this case, we don't need it. Um, okay, now, removing the blade. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn around the, the chop saw so you guys can, can uh, see how I replace and inspect the blade. So I'm over here, okay. In most, all the chop saws, when they're brand new, they always have a wrench. In this place, we have a, a hex wrench, and they provide it for one purpose, so you don't lose it, and you always you use the proper tool. Because when you lose the, the tool that it came with, with it, uh, a lot of the time, you try to use a different tool, and then it's not working right, okay? So at this point, the very first thing I do is raise the board, and then on this side, and then you point it out again, we have what we call a lock. This will lock the, the blade from not moving. So as I hold it here, even if I lower this down, I'm gonna put pressure on the lock, and then until it catches. You have to move the blade a little, you know, slow, and then it'll catch, there I lock it. So now the blade's not moving, I'm locked in, and then now I can unscrew it. Okay, and I'm gonna show you right now, unscrew it. Okay, so I have the lock pressed in. I can hold it, I know it's a little hard, but what I do, I use my finger up, and then the wrench that I already showed you, the hex wrench, you set it inside, it, it can stay there, and then you loosen it, okay? All you have to do is just loosen the screw, and then you're good, you can set it right here, and then unscrew it, And then what we have, we have the bolt, the hex bolt, then we have the washer, and then we have the guide, okay, and that came a little faster than I thought. It, it has a guide, it has to, and then, then I'll show you when we, when we put it in, okay, and then our blade. It has an inner, inner circle that should fit right inside when we put it in, as I'm showing right here. Okay, now, before we move into replacing another blade, uh, let's, let's find out if, if this blade is good. Okay, the blade still, it, does, the, um, it needs to be obviously, we need to inspect for this kind of damage is right here. I can see yellowish in here, and that means that this, this blade needs to be replaced. It needs to be replaced because when we're cutting, it may, um, it may fail on you, and then it'll cut, and then it can cut yourself. I mean, a lot of pieces will blow in, and, and you know, you may get cut. So we don't want you to do that. Signs of wear and tear. Obviously, this side is better than the other side, as we can see right here. Okay? So I would replace right now. This blade needs to be replaced, and that's what I'm going to show you guys how to replace the blade. Okay? Um, 
It needs to, we need to check the, the inner circle, but like I said, it's already been tampered here, so we don't want to use this blade. Best thing to do is get a new blade, like the one I have here, and you can see the difference. Oh. I mean, it's been, this one's probably still usable. I wouldn't recommend it because obviously it's better to have a new blade. Very first thing you want to do on a new blade, is pick the inner circle. Because that's very important. It has to be very secure. Make sure that it's not moving at all. It's, it's a, can you guys see the difference now between the, the old blade and then the new blade? How it's been, this one has yellowish here on the outer side. To where a new blade, there's really no damage in it whatsoever. Okay? So we have a brand new blade. Very first thing you want to do, look for the guide. And the best thing to do, push the bar back. Otherwise, you won't be able to get it in. You go in, and then you look for the, there's like a guide, you know, there's like a little circle, okay? In other, if, it's, if it's off, the minute you start running it, it won't cut at all, and it may break, okay? So we want to make sure everything's in place, then the next part, it, it fits, it, it has a guide, it won't, it's not rounded. Okay, see, now it's in, okay, then we have our, well, this should be, this is reverse. Washer needs to be in first, no, okay, this needs to be first. Then our washer, you know, and I don't think this was right. Got it in. Yeah, we can. Okay, here. Here we go. Okay. Washer and then the bolt. And do it by hand. It needs to be just by hand tightened until you, you reach a point where you can tighten it. Now, you want to reach over it and, and, you know, find out your lock again. Lock it in. Get your wrench. And it don't have to be super tight. All it needs to be is snug in, and then we're good. That's all we need. Check your blade, make sure it's secure, it's not moving. All the parts are in place, and we're ready to go. Okay? All right, so we, we replace the blade. Okay, we inspected the blade. Now we're gonna, and we already replaced it. Uh, everything's in place again. Now we're going to move into the cutting of the metal studs, okay? Um, and I'm going to show you the, what uh, the metal studs are. Okay. This is a metal stud in here. And the reason why we use this kind of blade is so we can cut. It's an abrasive metal blade. That's what that's called. Uh, we have the metal studs. And... I have them in pairs. It's easier to cut them when you have them like this in pairs. Even if it's long, and the, the best way to cut them, it's on the hard side. So you always want to have the hard side of the stud, and I'll show you what I mean by the hard side, okay? On a metal stud, the back side, this is what it's called the, the hard side. This side in here is what we call the soft side. And on a safety tip here, if you cut even one single stud, you always want to cut the back side. You never want, you never want to cut the soft side. And what happens when you start running your chop saw? The blade moves a little bit when you start cutting it, and it'll break your blade very easily. I mean, that, that blade will break very, very easily. It's a, that's how they come usually, I mean, they're... But it's, it's good, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, you guys can see. But overall, we have a, a new blade. Once it starts running, you know, it'll hit the blade and everything should be good. Okay, so always remember, even if you're cutting one single piece of stud, you always want to cut it facing down. Or the, what we call the hard side needs to be up. Okay? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pair them up. 
because like I said before, it's easier, okay? You set them like this, okay? Now at this point, I'm gonna plug it in, I'm gonna replace the, the wrench here so we don't lose it. We already went through the inspection process. Now the next thing what I wanna do is uh, I'm gonna plug it in. Now before we do any cutting of the metal studs, there's a few things we need to have in mind. Not just the safety glasses, but we also wanna use a safety, uh, a face shield. Very important. Uh, we wanna use the, safe, uh, the face shield because when you're cutting, the sparks will fly back to you. So you don't wanna get burned in the face. You're protecting your eyes with the, uh, with the safety glasses, but you also wanna protect your face. Okay, um, gloves, we need to have gloves, so um, very important because, you know, this will get hot. The minute you start running the chops off, it will get very hot. Um, earplugs, so let's get all ourselves, you know, our earplugs, and then uh, I'll, I'll continue with, uh, with the cutting of the metal studs. Very easy to put them on, you roll them, and then you fit them in. And, and they will unwrap by themselves and then they'll, you know, then you won't be able to hear or they'll cut the noise down. You'll be able to hear but not as, as, as loud as uh, the chop saw will do. Um, very important that we use earplugs. This chop saw runs on about, the minute we start cutting, it'll be about 200 decibels, which is really loud. If you're using it at the end of the, all day long, eight hours, your ears will get damaged. Then when you go home and you're trying to sleep, you, can, you will be able to hear the noise, you know, coming to you. If you wear the earplugs, even if it's for 30 minutes, half an hour, or, you know, an hour, nothing, there's no damage to your ears, okay? So that's why it's very important to use the earplugs, okay? I'm going to put them in. Okay, so I have them in now, and, you know, there's some difference of noise. I'm going to mark my studs, 24 inches, and you grab your tape, and I'm going to go on this side. I want to leave that on the, on the center of the stud, so you measure 24 inches, and I'm going to make another marking also at 24, okay? So I made two marks, okay? Now I have my gloves. Okay, face shield. We want to make sure before we do any of the cutting or moving, we want to have our face shield on. It should fit properly on your hard hat, like I'm showing right now. Okay, now I'm ready to cut. Um, very important, we need to have the back, backboard for the sparks, so the sparks don't fly. Um, we want to make sure that if somebody's behind, there's no sparks flying all over. So we need a backer board, okay? Again, I'm going to get my face shield. Okay, have it in. Line up the studs. Before you start cutting and moving the blade, you want to guide. Make sure you're on your marking. Um, once I get going, all you need to do, you start slowly and then just keep const constant pressure on the studs, okay? It's, uh, it's very easy to do and you guys will hear once it's going, you know how the, the, the noise gets going, okay? what I told you that it gets hot. Did you guys see that? How the spark was in it? Okay, we don't want that. So never touch it. That's why grab the center of the stud. So we have two studs right here. And I'm going to cut two more. Okay? This is the way to do it. Line it up. I did it freely. There's two ways to do this. Or you can use the vise. Okay? If you guys are not used to it, like me, I, I did it. You know, I've done a lot of it. But for you guys, I recommend Best thing to do, use the vise. Same thing, 
Before you adjust it, line it up, then secure this, drop, and then it's secure. Then it's not moving on you, and like I held it myself, I'm used to it, and I, you know, I, we should have done this first. There's two ways to do it. Table's good, so everything, we're ready to... So we have, you know, we already have a four stack cut. Okay, that's a productive way to cutting the studs with safety in mind. When you, nobody will get hurt. The sparks won't be flying now, and we should be in good shape. Now I don't need this anymore, and uh, we can take off our uh, earplugs as well. Okay, so um, we went to cutting of the metal studs. And like I said, keep constant pressure. Once you have the, the, the studs and you start cutting it, just keep it constant until they fall apart. Okay, never touch the ends. That's just, you know, a safety tip. And that's pretty much our lesson today. Now, um, for the summary, you know, we want to review some of the things we talked about and why it's important, you know, to keep in mind that, you know, it needs to be safety. Okay? Um, what I'm going to ask you about, you guys... What is required for PPE when we do the, when we have a chop saw? Can any one of you uh, tell me? You need a face shield. Face shield. Why do we need a face shield? To protect your face and also to protect your eyes. Okay, very good. Now, what else do we need on that? You need your, your, um, you need your hard hat on and your safety glasses. Safety glasses. Why do we need safety glasses? So that way you actually can test your uh, eyes. Yes, for the eyes. And like, you know, the face shield, what are uh, another uh, safety uh, PPE that we need? Uh, personal protective equipment. You need the gloves to protect your hands from the heat. Yes, very important. From the heat that, you know, it's generating when we cut the metal stud. Any other uh, uh, PPE that we need, you know, besides, uh, how about, uh, can anyone else tell me? Yes. Steel-toe boots or composites? Yes, if you're on a job site, you know, they will be required for, the, you know, uh, you know, 100%. Um, anything else? Yeah, earplugs. Earplugs. Excellent. That's that's what I wanted to hear from you guys. We need the earplugs. Why do we need the earplugs? So we can hear that. Yes. Mm -hmm. if, if, if we would have done it without the earplugs, there would have been a difference that you can hear the noise. Even if it's like for, you know, maybe five minutes. But if you do it all day long, you work for a company and you do it all day long, at night you won't be able to sleep because you will be able to hear that noise. That happened to me, you know, years ago when I started, when I was, a, you know, uh, an apprentice myself. Um, any other things that we need to, uh, as far as PPE? The back wall. The back wall. Why do we need a back wall? So that way the sparks doesn't go flying out. Yes. I mean, you're pro the guard here protects you from the sparks coming at you and the face shield, you know, to protect your face. With the backer board, very important, so you don't... Um, burn somebody else. On a job site, there can be people walking, you know, back and forth. And you don't want to keep it too far away. You want to keep it as close as possible. If we, we have about two feet, I would recommend, you know, a, a good, uh, no more than probably three feet at the most. Unless you have a big wall, then, you know, but this will be perfect on a job site. Okay. Now, parts. What What's good to inspect? Tell me, can anybody tell me? Wow. What do we... Uh, parts that we need to inspect on the chop saw? The guard. The bar, yes. And it needs to move freely, right? Mm -hmm. Any other parts? The cord. The cord. So, what, what to, uh, inspection do we need to do on a cord? We need to check to make sure there's no uh, burns, cuts, nicks, uh, scratches, things like that. Yes. Yeah. Check on the, on the ground. The ground. In this case, we don't need a ground, right? Okay, good. Um, what other parts do we need to inspect? Like, what is this called? Device. The vice, right? Um, what is this for? To hold the um, metal tracks to go. In place, right? Okay. What is this? What is this part? The spring. The spring, good. And uh, trigger, what kind of trigger do we need to have in here? 
constant pressure trigger. If it's not making this noise, then it's not good. Then we don't have a good trigger and we can we can run the chop song. Okay? Um, so, um, do you guys have uh, any other questions, you know, before we uh, uh, pretty much wrap it up? Okay, good. Uh, do you have to change a blade every so often when it's like damaged? Yes, the blade, like we talked before, uh, visual inspection along with, uh, you know, field touch. In this case, I can tell, even if you see the saw, you know, we made two cuts in this one and you can see that there's no damage, it's still black to where this one has been used for probably quite a bit of a time and it's yellow, it's just a start and you can start to see the thread in it inside which means that it's torn, you know, it's getting torn to the point where uh, you know, it probably can fail on you any other things that we need to bring up? no? okay, well, like, hope this lesson was good for you guys and you guys can, you know, use it properly uh, when you you know working for a contractor on a job site or even for a home use you know down the line you may be building something in your home and you can always remember to inspect your tools okay so I thank you very much for helping me out on, on this project and um, thank you okay that's all I have to say yeah all right.